to another episode of Let's Make This. Today we're not really going to make anything. Instead, we're going to find a way to improve productivity and we'll be doing that with the Pearson Work Holding Speed Change Pallet System, which is this set of four boxes. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about this because I have wanted a full set of this for so long and I've already owned one set, one base, as well as a, a full set of pallets. I think I have maybe eight pallets. Uh, but if you're not familiar with this, then this is the perfect opportunity to really learn how the Pearson work holding system uh, could change your pro production and your productivity and really give you efficient gains, that you, efficiency gains that you maybe you didn't even realize were possible. Uh, so when we talk about a pallet system, then you may think about uh, a few different companies. Um, I talked about Big Kaiser earlier, and they, uh, in the last episode, they, they actually make some pallet systems, zero point uh, systems that can lock in their ball locks. Jurgens makes those as well. Years ago, I built my own system because when I looked at a pallet system, I was looking at spending a good 20 grand just for the system. And I was using everything on just one machine. So it didn't really make sense to buy this expensive system just for one vertical machining center. However, uh, we now produce far more than we used to. Um, our Herco VM20 uh, is our only VMC at, the, at this moment. But we want to start taking some of those parts and putting them in other places, including uh, maybe a full laser system. So we might be moving them from one machine to another. Uh, but even if we're not, a pallet system improves productivity considerably for several reasons. One is, if you have a family of parts and you're running them in the you're running those parts in a vise or a double vise or two or three vices next to each other on your, your table uh, and you have to make 500 or 1,000 of these parts, then you're wasting your time. You are literally losing money by not having a pallet system. Unless your part is perfect for a vise, and I mean like square and large, then don't use a vise, use a pallet. And uh, part of this system really comes down to finding a way to make a pallet with fixtures to hold uh, all of your parts onto the table or onto the pallet. And then when you have a family of parts, let's say you're making part A and you wanna make 50 of those, but you wanna change over your machine to make part B because you need 50 of those to go with part A, like we do, uh, then you really need to have two different pallets that can lock right onto the machine and you can have all the offsets preset and know where they are and just push go on your machine. And that's what we do at Harrelson Trumpets. We've done it that way uh, for probably six or seven years now. So when I make parts, let's say I'm making the tuning slide for the trumpets, then I, uh, and I'm gonna grab a tuning slide real quick. So when I'm making a tuning slide, then uh, it's actually several pieces. These two tubes, and then there's a left and a right half and they're different. They're opposite of each other. So for my production on this part, if I want to make 50 tuning slides, I need to make 50 of part A and 50 of part B. Now some of my other parts require even more pieces, uh, like the belt crook. This one is almost the same looking thing. I'll show them together. You can see there are two different sizes. So this one is bigger and uh, if you look at it, it starts small and it gets gradually larger all the way to the top because that's the bell crook. So bells start small and they taper. And normally they're bent, but the way we make them is we machine these in two halves. So these two halves make up the bell crook. There they are. And there's a lot of 3D surfacing that we do. Uh, every day the machine is doing some really amazing surfacing and finishing. And uh, these parts have snap seams that I've designed that make them fit perfectly together. But I have to make both of these parts. And in reality, there are two special couplers that fit on here as well, and another one up here. Those other parts are made on the, the CNC lathe. So not a big deal, but we're starting to move to uh, making the entire bell. And that family of parts would include this, plus three parts that are turned on the lathe, plus uh, two more parts that are the center section of the belt, and then two huge halves of the belt itself. All of that stuff would be machined. If I want to be able to make the full family of parts for, say, five bells uh, all in one week, 
then I have to be able to set up all those different parts and fixtures to do that. And they're all different sizes. And they'd all have to be held different ways. And uh, that's why I use the Pearson Work Holding Speed Change Pallet System, SCPS. Uh, so I can't say enough great things about this. It's an amazing price point, way cheaper than anything else you're gonna find on the market. Um, it, the, it's locatable to, I believe, two ten thousandths of an inch. Extremely well built, heavy duty, and we're gonna jump in and see what these look like. So, pull up my trusty Leatherman. Uh, I must say something about that. The reason I carry a Leatherman instead of my own knife is because uh, I would rather lose this at the airport when I forget to take it off than one of my own knives. Some of you know this already, but I've been making custom knives for almost 20 years, and uh, I don't sell them. I just make them for myself or give them away. Um, but sadly, I've lost a couple at the airport. So I carry a Leatherman, and it is handy. It's the Skeletool CX. I love this thing. Um, and uh, I really shouldn't advertise other people's knives since I make them, but I don't sell my own. So here we go. Open this baby up. We'll start with the big box. All right. By the way, this is my first unboxing video. I've never really uh, done that. I've seen other people show what they're opening up, but I've never done that. So, I, I'll do it as quick as I can so we can see what's inside. Okay, so we have some air tube. Uh, and the way the system works is it has very high, heavy duty, high, uh, uh, I guess strong, uh, high strength springs inside it to push the balls in place. So I believe there's a center ball that pushes the little balls out to the side and it locks everything down. And uh, that is released with air pressure. And I already have one of these on my machine, which I'll show you here in a minute. But um, I will need more, more hose and more couplers and everything to set this up because we're gonna take it from one to three of these bases and pallets. All right, so we got the air hose. We got the hold down, toe clamps. So these are the clamps that are gonna hold these, uh, the bases to the pallet system on the table. And uh, we'll set those over here. And that's all that's in the first box. So, what's with that? All right, get these out of here. Yes, this is what I want to see. That is the base to the pallet system. Let me unwrap it. Can you tell I'm excited? So, last I checked, I don't remember what these were. Uh, I think these are around 2,000, 2,200, something like that. I, somewhere in there, 2,000 to 2,500 for up the, the starter set. And this is part of the starter kit. Um, because I bought two starter kits and some extra pallets, I think it's all packaged a little differently. But what we have here is the base, which those toe clamps would be holding down right here on your machine. And uh, it's just light enough to be able to hold up like this. And then these are the ball locks right here. So I can't push these balls in because there's a spring underneath pushing them up, pushing a ball in the center up and pushing these out. But you can see we have two locating pins. One is a full round and one's a diamond pin. And uh, we've got, oh, it's heavy. Nice, finely ground um, stop locks on the, on the Z. And uh, my original version, these were black, and now I think they changed to make those uh, stainless teal, uh, I think is what they did. So there's the first base, we'll set that here. And let's dive into the rest of these boxes, see what's in there. Dust or debris in there. 
All right, there's the first two bases. You are right now looking at the future of my company, which will be much more productive than before, simply because with three of these on my table, I can be cutting three different families of parts or all the same family. I'll create fixtures on each of the interchangeable pallets that will let me do pretty much whatever I want. And I should have a little plug here for Herco as well. Um, and Siemens, because uh, I'm not partial to any company, I just use what works. But my Siemens control that was on my Republic Lagoon machine was amazing. Uh, that control would allow you to set up pallets on your machine. And you could say, on this pallet, I have fixture number five, and I want to run this program here, and a different program here, and a different program here, and let's multiply that by three. You could say I want to do all of that on the Siemens control. And if you added two more pallets, you could say, hey, let's do the same thing for other families of parts. And you can create a whole job log of everything you want to create. And as long as all the tools are in your tool changer, you could push go and it would cut everything in whatever order you asked. Now, to do that in some of the controls today, you need to know how to write macros and do all these special calls and M98s and 99s and P number 1005 and all this stuff, right? Which I know how to do. I do that stuff all the time too. But um, the Siemens control, it was in there. It was included, it wasn't at an extra price, and it worked amazing. Now, when I bought my Herco last year, I wanted to do the same thing, and I had heard you could do that. Well, um, when I got the machine and I fired it up and started using it, I couldn't figure out how to do it. They said, oh, you need to use a conversational and write this and that and, and make it work. Well, and I watched a tutorial online, but it was incomplete, and I couldn't figure it out. So I called my local Herco dealer, and I said, hey, can you help me out? How do I do this? So for 300 bucks, the guy came out and tried to show me some stuff, and at the end of the day, he said, yeah, you're gonna have to buy a special option to be able to set that up the way you used to on your old machine. And I thought, well, that's odd. All right, I'll buy the option. How much is it? And he says, oh, I don't know how much that is. I said, well, give me a quote. So a few days go by, he calls me and he says, yeah, you probably don't want it. I was like, why not? I really want it. I need this, Siemens had it. It was very productive before. And he says, well, the price is kind of high. And I'm like, high, how much could it cost? And he said something like $3,500. And I'm not kidding. He wanted 3,500 bucks to turn on a, a part of the control that would let me choose which program I put where on the machine. And he said, that's really the only way to do it. And I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. I bought a Herco because I heard you could do this. And I looked through the manual and I couldn't figure out how I could do it, but I knew there must be some way. So I was really busy at the time. I'm trying to catch up on orders, everything else. I thought, well, forget it. I'm just gonna do it the way I know, which uh, was a lot simpler. Um, but it took a lot of time to write all this stuff in. Basically, I had to write a program and call up um, using M98 and M99. Uh, I had to call up different programs and run them the way I wanted and have the offsets. It was a lot of work, you know? And I know most guys don't even know how to do that, even though almost any machine tool could probably do it. So, long story short, about two months ago, I was working on the machine and conversational, and I was trying to figure out how I could do this, and I had come across some note in the manual that I hadn't noticed before, and unbelievably, turns out you don't need to buy that $3,500 option. You can use the, the conversational to just call up the programs, but I never found a tutorial that actually showed it on Herco's website um, or on YouTube. I never found one that actually made sense and worked, and now I just, reading the manual in the right spot, which wasn't where I expected, there it was. Now, I'll, I'll say this to Herco, if anybody there is listening, you guys really need to make that stuff obvious because when we're running lots of different parts and we wanna write a macros, if you have a simple way to do it, you need to sell that. You need to say, hey, look, we have that and it's included and here's how it works. Um, because, man, it would've saved me a ton of time and I know there are guys out there watching this who have Herco's and they're saying, yeah, I knew that all along. And there are other guys saying, what? So what do you do with conversational? And uh, we don't all know. But I'll tell you right now, what you do is you go to conversational, you start a pattern. You, you put all the coordinates in for your pattern. So if you know that the center of your part is here, 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 and here, and you want to cut four of the same program, 
then in patterns, you create that. Then the next section, you call a program. So your second part of conversational is calling a program. And you call the program that's gonna run there and there in those four positions. Then you end the pattern and you run it. Now if you had 16 different parts that you're gonna cut on your machine and they're all in different locations, all you do is repeat that process. Every time you have a pattern, you call out the locations for each of the part, parts that are gonna have that first program. And then in the program, you just go in and uh, you type in uh, a program name that's, or a program number that's the same. So like, um, you know, O1001 for the program you wanna run first. And, uh, or is it P, whatever it is. I think it's uh, O. So you, you put that in there and then at the bottom of the program you push M99 or you type in M99 and you're ready to go. And if you had 16 programs and you wanna run them all, you can do that. However, Perco guys, whoever's at the headquarters in Indianapolis, you guys, you need to make best of obvious because, you know, machinists sometimes can't find the information they're looking for when they're going from one control to another. And uh, I love your products, but you just, you need to sell that stuff and say, hey, this is the simplest way to do it. And you need to train your guys that are your salesmen to show us how, because I spent $1,200 in five service calls trying to figure out how to make that work. And you know what they told me? It's not possible. $1,200 for nothing. So yeah, I'm not happy about that, which is why I'm looking at DMG Mori or Matsura as my next machine. All right, so let's open the rest of these. That was my lecture to Herco. I love Herco, but you wait for 1200 bucks. It's not cool. But I did get it to work. It only took me 10 months to figure it out. All right, pallets. This is what the pallet looks like. This is the bottom side. As you can see, we have the, the locating uh, bushings and then it's been milled out where it's going to mate with uh, the pads, the stainless steel pads on the other, on the base. So we have the Z axis. And um, then the ball locks fit in here. So this is locating, that's locking, and that's Z. And this side is just a plain piece of aluminum and you want to take that and machine it into whatever fixture you want. Uh, so I'll take this and turn it into something that will hold probably six or eight parts uh, that are about four by five inches in measurement. And uh, usually the parts I'll be putting on this one will be um, anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch thick. And this would literally sit right on there. I'm not gonna put it on there now because I haven't cleaned it all up. So let's set it this way. Pull the rest out. Maybe I'll push fast forward on this section so you can see me zip around real fast. There's another. two bases, the air hose and fittings, toe clamps for all of them, and they're all set to go. All I need to do now is uh, clean up my machine a little bit, position these things exactly where I want them, meaning I will use um, my Renishaw probe to make sure that they are um, exactly lined up with the ways of the machine. And I'll show you how I do that. And then I'll tighten the toe clamps. I'll space them all out so they're the right spacing where I want them. And uh, then once I wipe everything down, I'll be able to start machining these pallets.